Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So here's a question that sounds obviously dumb, but actually has quite an interesting amount of nuance. Can an experienced solo dev make GTA? Now your initial reaction might be, of course not. And the reason why you might be thinking that is probably because you're thinking about GTA 5 or 6. And for those, yep, the answer is an obvious, of course not. However, there have been many, many games in the GTA series. So for example, what about GTA 1? Honestly, I think that nowadays with the awesome tools that exist, building GTA 1 is indeed doable nowadays by a solo dev. This was a top-down game where you could walk around, you could drive, shoot, you could interact with objects and do all kinds of quests. It had some light 3D elements, really just the buildings, everything else are just flat 2D sprites. This is a game that came out in 1997. It had about a two and a half year dev cycle. Also fun fact, did you know that GTA, the original name, used to be called Race and Chase? I think this is actually a fun tidbit of information, specifically in regards to marketing. I generally don't think that GTA 5 would have sold 150 million copies if it was called Race and Chase 5. But anyway, so yep, it had about a two and a half years dev cycle. It's hard to tell the team size. There's no specific mention. And looking at the official game credits, these have about 80 people. Although not all of those would have been involved in the core game team working on this all this time. A lot of these are actually under additional art, additional sound, and so on. So I assume that means something like temporary freelance contractors. So let's take a guess and say that the core team was about 30 people. A team of that size for two and a half years was definitely not cheap. This was definitely not a bedroom coders game. This was a multi-million dollar production. So I guess the question is, are the tools so much better nowadays, 25 years after this? Are the tools so much better nowadays that a solo developer can build what previously used to take a team of 30 people and millions of dollars? Have the tools really improved that much? Can one person do the work at 30? And can someone do something for free that used to take millions of dollars? And yep, honestly, I generally believe the answer is yes. I mean, definitely not for a beginner. Not for someone who is just getting started with game development, of course not. At that point, really, no matter how good the tools are, if you are a complete beginner, then even making something like Flipping Bird won't be a challenge. However, if you are an experienced developer kind of like myself, I've been making games for over 10 years and programming for over 25, I believe with the tools and the assets that you can get nowadays, with that, a game on the scale of GTA 1 can indeed be done by a solo game developer. Now, it's been years since I played this game, so I might be misremembering in terms of scale just how big the game was, but at least in terms of tech, building a top-down game, a 2D top-down game where you can drive cars, shoot enemies, and do all kinds of things. So you have driving, shooting, there's the cop AI, the wanted system, the gang AI, destroying a bunch of objects and doing all kinds of things. All of that, I do believe, can be done by an experienced solo developer nowadays. In fact, I would actually say that my last game, Dinky Gardens, was more complex than that. It's an automation management defense game. It's got tons of interlocking systems. And I made that game by myself over the course of about seven months. And I did that while also continuing to make regular videos over here on this channel, so I was working kind of part-time. So I do believe that a game on the scale of GTA 1 can definitely be done by a solo dev nowadays. And if you still don't believe me, if you still think that I'm crazy, then I'll point you to a game kind of like Stardew Valley. Obviously, this was made by an extremely talented developer and took many, many years to make, but it does showcase what today's tools can do in the hands of someone who is very skilled. Or perhaps for another example, look at Kenshi. This is a game with a truly insane scope. You can do pretty much anything and be pretty much anyone in this world. It's an insane game in terms of systems and content. And this was also made by a solo developer through the course of about 10 years. And these two games, these are actually relatively old by nowadays, meaning the tools keep improving. So if these developers start these games nowadays, it would take them less time to build all of this. And if GTA 1 can be done, then same thing for GTA London. It's pretty much the same game, just with different visuals. And same thing for GTA 2, which if I'm remembering correctly, was pretty much just more of the same, more of the same game. Visually, it looks a lot better and has a ton more content. But in terms of tech, it is still roughly the same type of game. So yep, I do believe this is still doable by a solo dev nowadays. Especially because nowadays, not only do you have access to excellent engines, kind of like Unreal, Unity, or Godot, but you also have access to the asset store with tons and tons of assets to build pretty much any game you can imagine. So even a solo dev like myself with no art skills at all, I can still build pretty awesome 2D and 3D games thanks to all of these assets. In fact, my last game, Dinky Guardians, it's a systems heavy game. It's programming heavy since that is my main strength. And then I use the asset store in order to bring my vision to life. And nowadays in 2024, there are even some awesome AI tools. Making 3D models is still a little bit rough, but simple sprites like GTA 1 and GTA 2, those can definitely be generated. And AI could also be useful in order to speed up the writing process to generate all these different quests, different characters, and so on. Obviously, you still need humans in order to analyze everything that the AI has built. But for a speeding up process, that is a very helpful tool. If you put all that together, then I do believe that nowadays, a solo developer can do what 25 years ago took a team of 30 people and millions of dollars. And now at this point, you might be thinking, okay, if you're so confident, why don't you do it? Honestly, if I had a time machine, if I could stop time for about six months, I would love to make a game kind of like GTA. That sounds like a really fun project. However, other than time, the main reason why I don't do that, and why I also would not encourage you to do it, the reason is simply because top-down shooter driving games, those really don't sell very well. You can browse around the top-down shooter tag on Steam, and you can see how quite a lot of them don't really have that many reviews. 
Always remember that just because you can build something, just because you put a ton of effort into it, that does not mean that it won't find commercial success. Although if you're doing it as a hobby just for fun, then absolutely go ahead and try making your own GTA. So I would say both GTA 1 and GTA 2, those can definitely be done by solo devs nowadays. But then when it comes to GTA 3, that one is definitely on the edge. The big jump in this one is obviously going from 2D to 3D. Back then, this was a huge deal. I was completely amazed when I first played it. It really felt impossible. Like, how is it possible that a game can look this good? Just the first mission, doing the prison escape and then driving a car. Back then, this felt like complete magic. However, nowadays, thanks to, once again, awesome tools and assets, that change isn't actually that drastic. Making a 2D or a 3D game is really not that different. The main difference is in terms of the assets. But again, nowadays, the asset store has mountains and mountains of really awesome assets. In fact, there's actually more 3D stuff than there is 2D. So in terms of general game tech, building the core game mechanics, yep, I do still believe that this one can still be done by a solo game developer nowadays. However, GTA 3, that one also took a huge leap in pretty much everything outside the core game mechanics. The world map is huge. Every character is animated, all of the cutscenes, they've got animations and some excellent voice acting. Now, there are some AI animation tools. Those can definitely help, but probably not good enough nowadays. Same thing for the voice acting. In this one, I believe all the characters are voice acted, all except the player. But unless you are a skilled voice impressionist, you could definitely not do the voices for every single character. And again, on that one, nowadays there are some AI tools that can definitely help. They still sound quite a bit robotic, so it still requires a few months, maybe a few years. And quite simply, just the fact that the game is really massive. Even with the help of tons of awesome tools, it would be really tricky to build this entire world and fill it up with interesting stories, interesting props everywhere, all this. At some point, no matter how good the tools are, there is some limit to it. So in terms of the core game mechanics, like the shooting, the driving, the various AI for the various things, all the gangs and all that stuff, all of that I still believe could be done by a solo game dev. However, in terms of building the entire game itself, building all the story, the entire world, all of that, doing all of that, yeah, that part would be impossible. And then of course, after that point becomes even more impossible. GTA 4 is yet another massive leap forward. It's got really high quality assets and a massive amount of them. The world is absolutely huge, so even if a solo dev got access to all these assets, it would still take you a lifetime to build this entire world. It also has even more cutscenes, more voice acting, more animations, all of that. There's more cars, NPCs, weapons, all of that. Then GTA 5 is impossible no matter how good your tools are. This game had a team size of over a thousand people. It's an insane game on an insane scale and got actually insane results. It's literally one of the best selling games of all time. And in the future, there's GTA 6. Who knows how many people have worked on this game? Probably several thousand throughout the entire decade. It is supposedly one of the most expensive games ever made, over $300 million. These games have a scale that is utterly impossible to even comprehend. But going back to the original question, can you build GTA? GTA 1, GTA 2, and even GTA 3? I do think that with the awesome tools that exist nowadays and with a very skilled developer, with that, yep, projects that would require previously 30 people or 50 people and millions of dollars, nowadays those same projects can be built by a solo developer and pretty much for free. Like I said, I would not recommend it if you're trying to find financial success with your games. Just because this genre, top-down shooting games, this isn't really a very marketable genre nowadays. But as a hobby, if you want to test out your own skills, then perhaps go ahead and build your own GTA 1. And if you aren't yet an experienced game dev and you want to become one, if so, then check out my complete C-Sharp course, link in the description. I include my 10 years of C-Sharp knowledge in this one course. It features over 50 video lectures, starting everything from the absolute basics to some more intermediate topics. And the course includes a really awesome companion project, this one contains questions, quizzes, and importantly, interactive exercises. There's over a hundred of them, and these exercises require you to actually write code in order to complete them, meaning you can actually learn by doing. This way, you truly learn the contents of each lecture. So if you want to level up your own skills and be able to build a game kind of like GTA, if so, then check the link in the description. Or for Unity beginners specifically, you can check out my free Kitchen Chaos course that will teach you how to make a very specific game from start to finish. Okay, so do you agree with my take on this question? Is making a GTA like something that you would like to do? Definitely go ahead and tell me in the comments. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.